Welcome back, guys, to Trails Through Daybreak, where last episode, after yet another bath, we set out into the long line night to sweep the town. Hearing something was up at the Bracer Guild that led us into the Poo Mountain Pass on a rescue mission in Finding Grey. With Grey safely retrieved, we now check out the other events awaiting us. Alright then, well, let's start by checking out some events, because the sweep's already done. I see we're following this person. <laughs> Other Let's Plays leaking into this Let's Play now. <laughs> oh, where'd she go? Maybe she went into the church. Let us all pray together. Is she a sister of the church? No, that can't be right. She isn't even here. I mean, I could have checked the top, but... Am I being led on the merry dance? Something's funny about all of this. It's a weird event. Ah, well, at least they're not a ghost. Now the question is, do I pursue or do I just pretend I saw nothing? Well, the real question is, is there a marker there? If so, and uh, is there a choice? <laughs> I pursue. Hello. Ah, what a lovely breeze. I had merely hoped for a light break, but I feel almost spoiled with how pleasant this has been. Her voice is pretty familiar. Out for a little stroll, handsome? You strike me as a tourist. From the capital, perhaps? Yeah, just here to kick back a little. How about you? Relaxing solo? Can't imagine someone like you'd be out here alone. Oh, quite sadly, it's just me, myself, and I this time. I must admit to being a touch lonely without my oh-so-naughty superior and rambunctious co-worker. I have an idea. Won't you be my arm candy instead? That's a very appealing invitation, but I'm afraid I've got some business to attend to. Besides, the kids in my crew would never let me hear the end of it if they found us. I think I could take a rain check. Goodness me. My hopes have been dashed. Well then, have a delightful night. And may you not end up a plaything for anything too nasty. The fact that I can't remember makes this all the more strange, but this is definitely not a situation to put my nose into. <laughs> a liminal city between east and west, the Kunlun and the Tianshan Mountains. I think I'll just say I met a fox playing at being human here. Ah, well that said, this fox definitely has all nine tails. Oh my, what brings you back? Could it be the evening breeze lured you back to spend some time with me? Nah, I've got stuff to do, sorry. Doesn't seem like she's trying to dig into me too much. Yet. I'll tell him when this fox is going to turn back into a beast. I'm better off just putting her out of my mind. No need to concern yourself, I assure you. Enjoy the moment here and now with the moon and the evening breeze. More factions at play than you could ever shake this at. Well, okay. That interesting person has been chased down. We have, of course, heard and seen her voice around. This will be a future destination for us, but isn't just yet because we've got to go check out that place after exploring. Looks like someone does live in now, after all. Makes sense, it's been five years. I wonder if it's someone connected to Taito or Master. Could be just be a total stranger, though. Oh wait, I still haven't talked to Judith. 
I should get around to that first before I go knocking on this door. Yeah, well, I wanted to see if any event happened or any dialogue happened if I did go there first. And they did, so... That's being thorough for you. There's always a choice. You don't have to do blue events. They just add to the story. No. There is zero choice. Speaking of which... There was zero choice for me having to use the bath again at this point in time because I can restore all my stuff. <laughs> Skip. Skip. Next scene. <sighs> That's the stuff. I don't have to see it again, but I definitely needed to bathe again. Gotta keep this up. You got some points. We're five points away! Right, I guess then it is... All up to you then, Judith. What we do next. Ah, uh, I'm not sleepy. I want to stay awake. We'd have fun! You're totally sleepy. <laughs> she's such a darling. You said she's the granddaughter of your office's landlord. Yeah, they run a pretty popular bistro, actually. My office is on the second floor, and all my part-timers are renting rooms on the third. Aha, so your whole crew is beholden to a single lord of landing. That seems nice in a way. You never have to worry about where to get a bite, right? True enough, the guy's list of complaints never ends, but he knows how to keep the food nutritious. Which pays for me, at this point. I have my crew of kids who are still growing. Ah, uh, now I'm actually feeling kind of jealous. I wish I could live a nice, balanced life like that. My meals and schedule keep getting messed up. What with industry dinners and invites from sponsors and whatnot. I guess that's one advantage to my side business. It's a decent way to spend some calories. Don't tell me your phantom fee thing is just a fancy way to lose weight. Uh, of course not. That's ridiculous. It's just a plus, that's all. Besides, I think I look just fine, thank you. Not like you had any complaints when you saw. Ah. Yeah, uh, about that, I'm real, real, real sorry. I wasn't being the most considerate about it. I'll do whatever you'd like to apologize. It's fine. Not like I haven't put that much up on the big screen before anyway. Compared to some of the sex scenes and stuff in the R17 versions of some of Gotti's movies, a quick semi-nude barely registers. Damn, though, you really are a pro. I'm going to say no to sketchy stuff like that. I would figured your agency would shoot stuff like that down in a heartbeat. They don't like it, but I usually convince them to give it the green light. It could be part of making a movie that much better. For the artistic side. Now, my mum's the one who really gets on my case about it. I'm so tired of hearing that I shouldn't be loose. That I need to save myself for... But why am I telling you these things? You say that, but you're the one who keeps walking into it. Still, it's not bad having family that cares at least, right? Your grandma was a former chancellor singer, yeah? And your mum was big on the stage, right? I'm surprised you know them. I mean, they're not a secret, but that was a while back. Well, they both left a big mark on the world. I still see some of your mum's posters on the walls and some bars. As for your grandma, I've heard her on records before. Three generations of artistic talent, huh? Yes, well, we're blessed, it's true. I'm still nowhere near the Phantom Thief Mum was, but I think I'm at least living up to her legacy as an actress. Ah, and here I go again! I swear I can't let my guard down around you for a second! At this point, I'm contractually obligated to point out you keep walking into these yourself. Ah, I'm gonna be a movie star too. <laughs> oh, it's you, you man. Now's probably as good a time as any to head over. I'm gonna be a movie star too. She sure sleeps easy, huh? That's a sign of someone who'll be a big deal in the future, mark my words. Also, you changed your clothes. You're going outside. Ah, yeah, got a little work and also some side business. Keep an eye on you, mate, for me, though, would you? Oh, well, that's a little unfortunate. But I won't dig into it. Yet. Just be sure not to get back too late. You wouldn't want to worry your poor assistants. What right do you have to dig into it? 
Let me just dig into all of your stuff by you accidentally telling me everything. And spill your secrets. No, I'll never talk. Apart from this is the government password and this is the... Fresh, man. I'm too social to keep a secret. Oh, right here. Piping hot. Seems that we've talked to everyone and done everything, so all we have to do is now is check that place out after exploring. What will be there? What will we see? An old dojo, right? Looks like someone does live here now, after all. Makes sense. It has been five years. <laughs> I wonder if it's someone connected to Taito or Master. Could be just a total stranger, though. Maybe this is a good time to stop walking around and give this door a knock. I'm just wondering, like, who it might be. <laughs> okay. There's gonna be someone in there. Related to everything. It's Walter. <laughs> Probably not. Maybe? Someone completely unrelated. Someone we've seen on a bike. Who could have business here this late at night? Well, that's not Walter. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe you actually came. Hey, nice night, yeah. I don't think I've met you before, but I'm thinking you're responsible for spreading word about my work around. Well, less you and more the guy who lives here. Well, I, how do you... Oh, you're with them, aren't you? Damn, he and you, guy. Though his reaction definitely says... You got me all wrong. My way ain't black, white, or even gray. I'm not here to interfere in whatever you're doing. I was just hoping to pay my respect. Um, what are you doing, Van? Oh, you followed me, huh? We happened to notice you looking over this way earlier today. You mentioned how you lived in Long Lai five years ago, so we thought this might be where. That, or maybe you'd taken a page out of that dumb race car driver's book and this was your local girl's place. <laughs> what? No, sure. Don't look at me like that. Hell no, damn brat. Mr. Arkwright does not strike me as the proper age for multiple mistresses and the like. And he's not filthy rich like Maxim either. So sorry about that. What's even happening here? Is this some act to get me to let my guard down? Well, no matter how outnumbered I am, you won't get the better of me. Who's this stuck up bozo? We're really sorry about bothering you so late at night. We won't disturb you any longer. Oh, on the contrary. By all means, come in. What? Huh? Gotta be kidding me. Please, stay inside, sir. No need to be so on guard around them, Cody. They're acquaintances of your sisters, as you very well know. They're also highly regarded by Prince Sharid, Fawn, and Professor Hamilton. I think we can at least afford to trust them as much as the Guild does, hmm? I suppose so. Um, so who's he? Why are you all acting weird? Because <laughs> it's my first name, baby. <laughs> it's understandable that you wouldn't know, Miss Alphired. <laughs> yeah, but damn, this is some turn of events. Until two years ago, you were the most famous man in the whole Republic. What are you doing in a place like this? Huh? <laughs> a love of surprises seems to be part of the job description, looking back through the ages. The current occupier of my old job is no exception. Still, if not everyone is aware of who I am, then I'd best get to introducing myself. My name is Samuel Rocksmith. I am the previous president of the Republic. It's a pleasure to meet you all, Arkwright Solutions. Yuga Ruran of the Taito School. I haven't been able to visit in five years, and heck, we never even met. But your student told me to give you his regards. Is Taito another style of Eastern fist fighting? Yeah, it's not as big as the Gex school, but a whole lot of skilled warriors use it. 
The immovable's part of it, and the direwolf's techniques are based off of it too. I'm no expert in these matters, but that makes it sound quite incredible to me. For sure. Unfortunately, when the head of the school died over 10 years ago, his students dispersed all over the place. Since my own master was a friend of his, he looked after his dojo after that. That's how I ended up staying here for about half a year. Now I see. But the martial art that you know now isn't Taito, is it? Indeed, nor is it the Gekka School. I believe it was called the Kunlun School. Yeah, it's a school that draws inspiration from both the East and the West. My master was Western, but he decided to train in that school, and then he passed it on to me. Fate sure is a funny thing. Feels like fate brought us here too. Still, does the fact that you're talking about your master in the past tense mean... Yeah, he died three years ago. He might have been like a father figure to me, but he had a boatload of other students, and not all of them in martial arts. Heard he died protecting one of his more respectable ones. I wish I'd been able to be with him when the time came, but I guess the least I can do is make an offering for him here. Man. Well, I guess we can join you. So he is the Roaring Lion's unofficial student. The Spriggan who serves as a bridge between light and darkness. What a fascinating young man. I'm interested in everyone with him too, including her, naturally. So you knew my master and Master Ryuka, Mr. President? I most certainly did. I met them both in my younger years. Though I regret to say the opportunity to see them was rare after I took up office 12 years ago. Still, your master and I did come together to mourn Master Ryuka's passing. That makes sense. So, what was your Sword of Pop's name? A Aaron? Talk about being oblivious. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure if I'm at liberty to tell you that. His name was Gunther Barkhorn. He was a traveling priest for the Septian Church. Right, we're gonna have to stop here because, yeah, I've been thinking, like, of course, there's an old guy that died. <laughs> then it says three years ago. <laughs> it's like, oh, this guy's pretty important, probably already. And it's like, uh. <laughs> but yes, yes, he died. Isn't that how you pass on stuff? Certain things? But not dead? Because <laughs> that was him driving down the highway, right? So explain that bit of it all about passing on the stigmas and all of that stuff. It's not even just the hints are there. It's just like you have to go, oh, it's an, uh, like an older guy who died. They keep talking about. <laughs> and it is someone that died that obviously happened in the past and it's probably going to be notified. And it's not just going to be a new character from left field because it's trails. And there's really not many people that actually fit that thing, because there's not been many people dying up until now. So when someone dies off camera randomly, and it serves as a power-up for one of your characters, you will take note. <laughs> but this is like... That's... I have so many questions, Grouse Ritter Weiss. <laughs> it's not about him at all, it's more about, like, the, the transferring of stuff. <laughs> Alright, let's continue. <laughs> His name was Gunther Barkle. He was a traveling priest for the Septian Church. Wait, what? So he went around doing work for the church? Far and wide, yes. That being his profession is a surprise, though. It certainly is. So how did a priest become a master of martial arts in the first place? Well, he wasn't your ordinary priest, to put it mildly. I was more an unofficial student of his, but he had a whole lot of crazy official ones, too. Compared to them, I was a total failure, and honestly, way more trouble than I was worth. Man. He sounds like he was a wonderful master and father. That is how I came to be in charge of this residence. I've been living in seclusion here ever since conceding two years ago. I visit the capital on occasion, but I spend most of my time here living a simple life, enjoying the springs whenever it suits me. Well, you lost in politics and you bowed out with honor. Shame other people can't. Well, I would give to have a life like that. Ah, perhaps in 40 years or so you can. Speaking of youth, I ought to introduce my friend here. What? He's your secret service detail, is he? This is Warrant Officer Cody McMillan. He is affiliated with Hercules and a member of the secret service. He is the younger brother of second lieutenant Kayla McMillan, whom I believe you met in Basil. <laughs> 
Okay, then. Oh, I can see it now. You're right. They do look somewhat alike. Two siblings in the CID, yeah. So is Rene or... <laughs> He's not my direct superior, if that's what you're thinking. Even if he has helped me in my work. While my sister and I at least have some things in common with Chief Ruron, we don't see eye to eye with your friend on very fundamental issues. Ah, I get ya. Hmm? What are you talking about? Did we just wander into some kind of internal dispute in the CID? Ah, uh, not quite. I was well acquainted with Cody and Kayla's father. It was a true shame that he lost his life fighting against the Empire, but that was what led Cody to agree to work under me. My, my father has nothing to do with my motivations. Mr. President, I serve you because I believe this country needs you. You are a far better leader than that cowardly short-sighted swindler who... Cody! I, I'm so sorry, sir. I shouldn't have overstepped my bounds. I understand your intention. I'm happy that you think so highly of me, but you never know who could be listening. Besides, the result of the election two years ago was entirely legitimate. I can't approve of any distortion of the truth. Yes, but... I'm sorry. Well, I'm not going to wade into that dispute, but I can see you're still a well-connected man, Mr. President. Especially since you were able to arrange this trip for us while spreading word of our four SPGs. I guess he did mention Crown Prince Shuri's name earlier. Yeah, and fans. And the professors. Hold on. Then the other person who invited us here was... Mm-hmm. I'm calling on behalf of Elzheim's Crown Prince Cherie, the Basel Institute of Science's Professor Hamilton, the Kowloon Group's Fan Lu, and one other individual, whose name I will not disclose, to extend you an invitation. I would be that individual, yes. I have been acquainted with Grand Prince Salman and Professor Hamilton since my days in office. I also became acquainted with Elder Gien of Heiwei during those years, however he is a rather frightening fellow. As such, I opted to consult with his son, Fan, on this occasion. I see. Eh, I totally feel you there. Okay, I think we get how we came to be here now. Still got a big question though. Why would a former president want to speak with a shady spriggan like me, and why go so far to do it? I can't picture you wanting to hire us for anything, considering your position. That's a fair point. Um... It wouldn't be a very wise decision politically, true. Yeah, the current ruling party would absolutely take advantage of it if they found out. It would pose too great a risk. Y you think he hasn't thought of that? <laughs> you are absolutely right. I didn't bring you here to hire you for anything. That said, I'm well aware of the good work you've been doing all over the country. Whether it was in Cray, Longport, Tharbad, or Basel. As you know, all of those surface incidents were caused by Almada. But I believe there are deeper issues they share at their core. It's been two years since the war ended. The unprecedented prosperity our country has been blessed with has pushed the problems we have always had into the background. However, they never went away, and their effects are starting to be felt once more. Well, the Mafia is always going to be a problem. And it's true that Professor Callahan's descent didn't start with them. Jaeger calls all over have been getting a lot busier lately. As has Marduk. Perhaps you're right that these deeper issues are beginning to rear their ugly heads. And the one who's guided us to this point is... Why does she look so gloomy? Huh. Either way, the boost the reparations provided to various fields is coming... is close to coming to an end. I knew I got that sentence wrong. Calvin's real strength is about to be tested. I can't imagine our president hasn't seen this coming either. The monumental change we've seen ain't gonna come without aftershocks, you can count on that. To be sure, they're likely to extend beyond the economy and, and into the field of technology too. All those dipshits whining about the immigrants are going to come crawling out the woodwork like rats again, huh? The same people whose racially motivated acts of terrorism led to the economic crisis a few years ago. That's all worrying to hear. Worrying, yes. But all of that was also what led me to want to meet with you. 
We live in highly turbulent times, with countless forces of light and darkness at work in this young republic. But we have you, a group like no other, not heroes of justice like the Guild, nor the CID, who maintains balance on the government's behalf. You work alongside groups on both sides of the moral spectrum, while having your own distinct style all the same. And I can only hope that you will be a powerful force in carving a future for our country. <laughs> You're even craftier than I'd heard. <laughs> Though it is motivating to have all of that said about you. I don't know how much I'll be able to help, but I'm here for whatever you need. As someone who lives and works in this country, I want it to be a peaceful and prosperous one. Everyone. <laughs> Can't help but feel like you're thinking a little too highly of us. But this is one connection I'd wager is well worth having, even if it might bite us back one day. I'm glad you feel that way. I can see I was right to invite you here after all. I hope we can have a long and fruitful relationship, Mr. President. We're more than happy to take on jobs for you, providing you bring them in through the back door. And so long as the pay and profile fit our standards, of course. <laughs> I am delighted to hear that. May this partnership serve us well, Van Arkride. Okay, yeah, he was about as sharp as you'd expect a former president to be. Easy to see how he could keep up with Hayaway's elders when negotiating as president. Indeed, I believe the two sides worked together to stop terrorists at the trade conference four years ago. The current president is a formidable figure in his own right, but the former president has clearly lost none of his skill. I got the impression he's still working with the current opposition party too. Not that it seemed like he had any interest in dragging us into any political squabbling. I agree. I believe he came to us purely as an individual, thinking of Calvert's future. I'm really glad I got to talk to him. I feel like I learned so much from the experience. He also spoke to you in private after we were all done, didn't he? Oh, I noticed that too. <laughs> he did, but we didn't discuss anything of real importance. I have to admit I was surprised to learn about you working for Arkwright Solutions. I can't imagine Roy is none the wiser of that fact either. You know my dad? W well, I mean, you know him in a professional capacity, obviously. You make it sound like you're more personally acquainted. Uh, I suppose it makes sense that you wouldn't know this. But before establishing the Patriot League as a party, Roy was part of the Republican Party just like me. The two of us were on very friendly terms indeed when he first delved into politics after leaving the armed forces. I also knew your mother. I even remember meeting you when you were still a baby. I had no idea. I'm not ignorant about what happened in the election two years ago. So much scheming went on behind the scenes to remove you from office. And the man responsible for it all was... That's just how the world of policies is, young lady. The 23rd president of the Calvert Republic that came of it has brought us unprecedented prosperity. He is also standing tall as a force to be reckoned with, for better or for worse, in the current world in which we live. Besides, nothing in politics is inherently good or evil in the present. Morality is solely for history to judge. All we politicians must do is ensure that our fair republic is deemed right. Be that through leading it to greatness or offering an alternative should our leaders lose their way. Such is the life of ones in our position. Mr. President, all that said, you just leave the burden of politics to us adults for now. I would rather you keep your focus on what you want to achieve. And I will. Thank you, Mr. President. She looks like she's had a big weight lifted off her shoulders. Eh. Oh, there you guys are. You're up again, huh? Did you come to collect us? Yep. I, I'm very sorry that we took so long. 
Oh, don't worry about it. We had a good nap between us. You had to be up early today too, didn't you? You should probably hit the hay yourselves. Can't argue with you there. You guys could uh, head back to our rooms then. I know I am. I might pass out as soon as I hit the bed. Now you get to sleep around yes and fairy. That's right. We did say we were going to do that. We won't all fit in the bed at once though, so we'll have to take turns. Push the beds together, maybe. I don't know. Oh, that looks actually... Oh, no. There's no desk. There's no bedside table. Mommy. An enemy attack. No. <laughs> what do we have here? A paranormal being? Oh, but there's more at work here than that. Someone just possessed our baby. 